Hello, bombshells. This is JDT Friars Fan 97 here. And this some breaking news today that Disney's entertainment streaming businesses ekes out surprise profit as Disney Plus core subscribers topped 117 million subscribers. Disney Plus will add modest amount of ESPN live sports to flagship streamer by the end of 2024, Iger says. Disney's entertainment streaming segment, anchored by Disney Plus, scored its first profitable quarter, helping to particularly offset continued weakness in the media kilometers linear TV business for the first three months of 2024. To be sure, Disney Plus' overall streaming business was still in the red for the quarter when factoring in ESPN Plus, which has which had an operating loss of $65 million. The company rein, reiterated that it, its, its, its expectation that its combined streaming off operations would achieve profitability in the September 2024 quarter. Overall, Disney Renovue for the quarter ended March 30th was in the line with Wall Street expectations, while it beat on adjusted, adjusted earnings per share. The Mouse House's results got their biggest lift from, their, from the theme parks division, which Renovue rose 10% and operating income was up 14%. Disney's theatrical review dropped year over year as there were no sig significant titles released in the, in the quarter, and review with in the linear network segment declined 8%. Disney's entertainment direct-to-consumer business in encompassing Disney Plus, Hulu, and Disney Plus Hotstar turned a profit in the quarter. Operating income was $47 million, compared with a loss of $587 million a year ago on revenue of $5.64 billion, up to up 13% for the period, which was the company's Q2 of, of fiscal 2024. Disney Plus Core, which includes Disney Plus Hotstar in India and other Southeast Asian countries, gained 6.3 million subscribers in the period to hit 117.6 million above forecasts of 6% sequentially. The company previously projected Disney Plus Core subscriber net at a 5.5 million to six million. While while we are expecting software entertainment D DTC results in Q3 to be driven by Disney Plus Hotstar, we continue to expect our combined streaming businesses to be profitable in the fourth quarter and to be a meaningful future growth driver for the company, with further improvements in profitability in five in fiscal 2025. The company said, Disney credit the improved DTC entertainment results to subscription revenue growth driven driven by price hikes for Hulu, for Disney Plus and Hulu, as well as subscriber growth in Disney Plus Core, along with higher ad revenue and lower distribution costs. Average monthly revenue per subscriber for Disney Plus Core globally rose six percent sequent sequentiality to $7.28 while it dropped 2% in, in the U.S. Canada to $8. Subscriber growth jumped 17% sequently in the U.S. in the U.S. Canada region, which netted 7.9 million new Disney Plus customers to reach 54, 54 billion. Helped by, helped by its deal with Charter to offer Disney Plus to select Spectrum TV subscribers for no additional charge. Meanwhile, Disney Plus Core lost 1.6 million paid users in the rest of the world, less than 2% quarterly over qu quarter over quarter, to sit at 63.6 million. 
CEO Bob Iger said in prepared marks our strong performance in Q2, which adjusted EPS up 30% compared to the prior year, demonstrates we are delivering on our stra strategic priorities and building for the future. Our results were driven in large part of our experiences segment as well as our streaming businesses. Importantly, entertainment streaming was profitable for the quarter, and we remain on track to achieve profitability in our combined streaming businesses in Q4. By the end of 2024, the company will add an ESPN title tile to Disney Plus to provide a modest amount of live games and other sports programming to all Disney Plus U.S. subscribers, Iger said on a call, saying that's, first, saying that's the first step to bringing ASPN to Disney Plus viewers ahead of the launch of a standalone ESPN streaming service in 2025. In addition, the plan is to give ESPN Plus subscribers access to that content through Disney Plus, he said. I could frame the move for the, in the content of the encouraging results of the integration of, of Hulu with Disney Plus. Iger also noted that Disney will begin will begin cracking down on streaming users who are impro improperly sharing passwords starting in some markets in June, followed by a wide rollout in September. All during to Disney's lack of big move big movie premieres in the March quarter, Iger said, we have a number of highly anticipated theatrical releases arriving over the next few months. On the call, he sit he sitted a upcoming films including Kingdom of the Planet of the Planet of the Apes premiering May 10th followed by Inside Out 2 and Deadpool and Wolver and Wolverine the results come after Iger and the 11 other incumbent Disney-backed board members last month won re-election by a wide margin at the annual shareholders meeting that followed a continuous month-long proxy fight fought by Chiva's investor Nelson Peltz, whose, train, whose triant partners had unsuccessfully lobbied to get a pair of board, of board seats. Peltz had argued that Disney's stock underperformance required new directors directors to provide fresh thinking. For the March quarter, Disney's domestic linear TV review, excluding ESPN, dropped 7% to $2.27 billion, and operating income slumped 22% to $520 million. Disney attributed a decrease in operating income to the impact of the non-renewal care care, care uh, non-renewal of carriage of certain networks by an affiliate a reference to charter dropping eight cable networks last fall and a decline in ad revenue reflecting lower advantage viewership ESPN Renovue was up 3% to $4.21 billion, and operating income declined 9% to $799 million. $799 million. ESPN Plus dropped 400,000 subscribers in the quarter, declining 2% sequently to $24.8 million. Overall, Disney posted Renovue of the $22.8 billion of 1.2% and, and a net loss of $20 million versus net income of $1.27 billion in the year earlier period, or a loss of one, of one cent per share. The company's bottom line took a hit from, from a one-time $2.5 billion charge for goodwill impairments related to Star India and unspecific 
unsophisticated, specificated entertainment linear networks. The impairment at Star India was a result of the company's deal with Reliance Industries to merge Star India operations with, with Resilience Re, Resilience's Viacom 18 in a new joint ven, venture. Goodwill impairment occurs when a company has acquired an asset for more than than its fair market value, and then the value of that asset declines. Disney shares went down more than 5% in pre-market trading Tuesday. As of Monday, May 6, the stock was up 29% year-to-date. Excluding the $2 billion goodwill impairment charge, as well as amortization of 21st Century Fox and Hulu intangible assets and fair value stepped up on film and TV cost, Disney's adjusted earnings per share for the quarter came in at $1.21 a share, up to 30% year over year. Wall Street analysts on average expected revenue of $22.12 billion and adjusted earnings per share of $1.10 of for the quarter, according to the data prop provider LS LSEG. As a result of the outperformance in the second fiscal quarter, Disney raised its full-year adjusted EPS growth target to 25% from at least 20% previously. The company said it repurchased $1 billion worth of shares in the quarter and that it looks forward to continuing to return capital to, return capital to shareholders. Anyway... I hope you enjoyed this uh, breaking news video and remember, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because so that way you won't miss any updates. So yeah, thanks for watching Un until the next video. This is JDT Fridays Fan 97 signing off. Ciao.